Hello, Miss Fields. It's, it's just you and me right now. Okay. All right. I'm hanging in there. Well, okay. it's, good to, it's good to hear from you. How's your daughter doing? I meant to ask you last week. She's fine. She's actually at, uh, she's in class, UDC. You know, I'm with the UDC. Huh? I'm with the UDC. Uh, yes, I know. We had discussed that. Yeah, I, I got, I took <laughs> so myself. So we'll hang in until everybody else come back in. Everybody come on. Okay. Uh, so we're not going to be that long tonight. Uh, all we're going to do tonight is just have um, Bible, uh, we're going to have prayer meeting, a few testimonies, and then I'm going to let people go back to the election and kind of, you know, get into that or relax for evening. We're at the midway point. We get ready to go into chapter 11. I can't wait to get into it. Uh, exactly. The two witnesses, but I'm not going to do anything. I'm kind of tired. I've been going this since May, and I'm kind of tired too. So we're going to give people a break tonight. We're going to do like a half hour, unless people want to talk. Okay, okay. Some people might want to talk and express their feelings about the election or something like that. I had a broadcast last night on that, uh, which with the young people. Uh, exactly. And I missed it because I worked the election. Matter of fact, I'm actually trying to get in contact with the Board of Election now because I worked last night and um, and I got a lot of the timesheets. So I'm a, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to call down there. I think they're trying to add up those uh, votes and stuff. So I'll, I'll be on mute, but I'll be back when everybody get on. Okay, okay. All right. Well, okay. I miss you, and, and thank you so much for all your support. I appreciate it. I can't wait to meet you one day. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. I'll be right back. Okay, take time. Okay. Hey, wife, you looking? Look at you. Look how beautiful you looking tonight. What is going on up there? Oh, I know you must. You might be thinking that you're gonna be some kind of young guy gonna be trying to get on here and talk to you because I know you ain't dressed up like that for me. Can you hear Who are you me? Talking to? talking to you. Me? I know you ain't looking that pretty for me. You the only one out here, aren't you? Right now, Miss Fields came home. She got back off. And I, I she, 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 she said she'll be right back. I told her all we're going to do is say, uh, I'm not. OK, this is Nicole. Hold on. Nicole, speak up, speak up. <laughs> hey, Nicole. Hello. It's just How up. are you? I'm good. I'm gonna, um, I just finished eating dinner, so. I'm hungry. I was like, I looked at the clock like, oh, I have to log on. Yeah, we need to see you. <laughs> uh, I don't need to see you. See, let, let's stay in incognito. But look, this is what we do. I'm doing. incognito today because my hair isn't done. Look at, look I didn't do my hair I yet. I want you to do my <laughs> hair, Nicole. <laughs> I, I'm going to give me some of, them, uh, some of them plaits, and I want you to start right here. <laughs> you going to get you one of those? Oh, here you, you go. go. There's, a, there's a guy that I know that does those uh those little uh, weaves for men, That's you know? I yeah, I want to I give one. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Ain't that funny, Nicole? <laughs> no, it's I he he really like uh, does a good job, but I don't know if you would like it. You look like a totally different person. You know, I've never seen you with a head of hair, so that'd be interesting. Well, you have seen me, but it, it was like a long time ago. I, I used to have hair before these church people don't worry me to death. <laughs> I'm thinking about give me one of those Steve Harvey's, man. Oh. <laughs> look, one of the ones. He, he did his hairstyle he used to have back in the day, huh? Yeah, look. Hey, yeah. We're, we're, gonna be tonight. <laughs> Nicole, we're not, we're not going to be on the phone that long tonight. I'm not teaching uh, Revelation tonight. We're going to have a fellowship, testimony, scripture reading, prayer. And then if people want to talk, then we're going to let people talk all they want to talk. Uh, for about no, half. no revelation tonight. Okay. No, nah, no, nah, because it, we're the midway point. I'm going to explain it when everybody get on. Okay. I'll let people get back to their life tonight because people have been very faithful. Like you need a night off or something, you know. Yeah. But we're gonna, but we're gonna have a testimony and so forth, and then we'll let everybody get back to the election, you know. Yep. Yeah, a lot of people are having not able to sleep. Well, me Waiting for the just, election, that's all true, the ballots though. to be counted and all that. Yeah, we stayed yep. up. Until, you know, we stayed up until we couldn't take it no more. You stayed up late last night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We we, we just was wanting to know. I mean, we knew it wasn't going to be last night when they told it, but we wanted to see it. No, before. if it was, if it was not Corona virus, and we just voted like normal, we would have known last night. But because I, I, I do because we, it would have just been like we just voted like normal. I think with all these millions and millions of mail-in ballots and stuff like that has a lot to do with it too. It's um it's um seven o'clock. I'm gonna go ahead and get us started. Okay, hold, hold on. And, okay. and by the way, we're we not gonna be on Facebook tonight either. Okay. Well, let me let me go get us. Good evening and welcome to the Service for Christ Ministries prayer meeting and Bible study hosted by the Reverend Dr. Jerry W. Jones Jr. live on Zoom and Facebook. Please stick around after our broadcast to learn more the, about our ministry. No music. We, now we do. Yes, it's music. Yes, it's music. Yes, it's music. You take all the green this world has to offer. You take misery and pain. You take them inside of your heart and discover that they're driving you insane. Why don't you take a gift from the Lord to give you love? Well, welcome to Service for Christ Baptist Church prayer meeting tonight. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Well, we want to welcome everybody who's here. We got Nicole, we got Pat. And so we're very grateful to you all for joining us on this great evening. And we thank God for every single thing that he's doing on this Wednesday, November the 4th. And so let me begin with the word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love and your peace. We thank you for your patience. 
And even now, as we come before your presence with exceeding joy, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for the great, marvelous, and magnificent things that you do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for our prayer meeting, our fellowship hour. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Ask God to bless everybody. And we're not going to be on Facebook tonight. We're not going to talk about Revelation. We're going to pick up chapter 11 next week um, and give everybody a chance to get off their phone and go be with their families for a change. And I appreciate everything that, that everyone is doing. Now, you all said that y'all could hear the music playing with the intro, yeah. right? Right. Initially, um, it was you know Malcolm saying the introduction, and then the music started right. On yeah, time. then I yeah I could hear the music too. Yeah. That's good. So we so we still recording on um on Zoom, but we're not going out to Facebook. So we still will have the recording of our prayer meeting and our Bible study. Amen. So I'm gonna turn it over to the illustrious first lady, <clears throat> the first lady of servants. Yes. Baptist Church. <laughs> Thank you all. You didn't put on all that nice looking clothes for me, I know, but that's okay. Go right ahead. Good evening, Pastor. Good evening, Nicole. Good evening, everyone here tonight for Servants for Christ Baptist Church. Prayer, fellowship, testimony, and anything you'd like to talk about evening. We are so pleased that you all are here this evening. We're honored to see you all, and I hope that you all had a wonderful day. I, I, I had a good day, and I want to hear about you all's day as well. Um, I would like to just say um, it was a good day. Um, so far, I know everybody's anxious and excited about what's going on with the election, the presidential election, and the things that are going on in, in their states and the senators, congressmen, whatever, who you wanted to win, who you didn't want to win. Uh, we're not going to be here that long this evening because I know a lot of you are trying to get back in front of the television set just to see who's going on. Hi, Reverend Lundy, how you doing? <laughs> but tonight we're going to have a special type of evening. We're not going to, um, as the pastor said, we're not going to discuss Revelation. We're going to talk about anything you'd like to talk about, including current events, which is also including about the election that's going on, if you want to do that. Um, let us just um, bow for a word of prayer. Father God, we come at this time just to give you all the praise and all the thanks and all the glory. And just thanking you, Lord, for bringing us here to another day, to fellowship with fellow members of your world. And we as Servants for Christ Baptist Church come together to fellowship with each, un, each one of ourselves, each one of us, as well as those who are on the line and may join in with us. We thank you, Lord, so much for all that you've done for us. We can't tell you how pleased we are that you've allowed us to see one more day. And Lord, we know that there's a lot of things going on in the world today and people are anxiously waiting to see if we have a new president or we will remain with the president that we have and as well as all the other elections that are going on. But you know what? Whatever the outcome is, we know, Lord, you have us and that's what we thank God for because of you Whatever comes out our way, we'll be able to handle it because we know that you will be with us. And we thank you so much for continuing to be with us. As always, we would like to pray for the first responders, the, the teachers, the ministers, um, everyone here who may have been affected by um, COVID-19. And thank you, Lord, for allowing us who may not be affected by it, but thank you for keeping us safe from it. And we ask you to continue to be with us as we learn about your word, as we continue to walk in the word that you have given us, as you've written in the Bible that we so graciously read and understand. And Lord, thank you so much for just being there for us each and every day. Lord, we praise your holy name. We continue to be with you all the time. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 So, um, Nicole, have anything you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, just, uh, you know, um, I try not to look at TV too much today. And I try to ignore, I didn't go on Facebook like I normally do. So I, I, I just don't even want to... Um, read all the negative comments that people have about the election and about both candidates actually. So 
Um, yeah, that was pretty much what I tried to do today is avoid uh, lo- looking at the news or because, you know, everything's running uh, at the same time on every network. So I just tried to avoid all of that. Um, that was it mm-hmm. pretty much. But um, yeah, I understand. This is something that we don't have control over. So, um, and this also is like they were saying, one of the most important elections of our lives. I do feel like there are a lot of people who have a lot of um, hard feelings because of the things that maybe they had to go through because of COVID and the lockdowns and loss of income and all these different things. So I do feel like a lot of people do have hard feelings um, right now. So uh, I, I just wanna you know, pray for those people and that's it. But it's a lot, tensions are high. You know, people have a, yes, a lot. And even yeah. people that I know personally who have um had to you know move back home and they lost their job and you know just everything um you know move back with their family and stuff and everything that was going well for them has fallen apart and everyone does not know how to pick up the pieces when things fall apart right um so that's why we have to keep you know people lifted in prayer who are going through things because everyone doesn't have um the strength to pull it pull it back together and try and figure it out so i know i know there are a lot of people who are are uh, suffering i do feel like um this you know and that it was it just was a lot just so much i don't want to take up too much time but that's okay talking about it but there there were <clears throat> months that went on where people were desperately hoping for another bill to pass, another stimulus bill. That yeah. never happened. That was horrible because that affected so many people that I knew, people that I had for clients, even people in my own family. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, like I said, people just have a lot of pain, hurt, you know, just all uh, of, a, a mixture of emotions and um it's just it's just crazy that's why I'm trying to avoid like feeding into the emotional side of uh of how things are right now so mm-hmm. well I can understand that and it, it is a lot of emotions running around and um, of course, everyone has their pick because I'm, I'm thinking everyone on this line has voted, but um, there's only going to be one winner. And, and as, as I, I say, whoever that person may be, we, we'll be okay because we have God. And he's not going to let anything harm us because, you know, we walk with him. Right. Reverend Lundy, how are you tonight? Oh, <laughs> And, and I'm fine. How, how's everybody? Oh, yeah. pretty Ronnie, good. Listen, Ronnie, yeah. uh, just so you're aware of what we're doing, we're not going to have the um, we're not going to have the uh, study yeah, on. I heard. Okay, you heard already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I just want to let sure you know. We yeah. forgot so, what you're talking about. We not only have God; it's probably God that chooses the winner. Man, that's right. And uh, um, <clears throat> like he did in Bible, he picked some. Uh, even pick kings and people to take even take out Israel for for their uh, evil uh, sins that they were committing, and, and also uh, 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 God is still He's still on the throne and He's still doing the things that He talks about in the Bible. Like if someone comes out with pride, mm-hmm. like some of the candidates do, well. God, destruction comes with pride and with a halt of spirit it'll fall. So mm-hmm. and so that's active now. 
whoever comes out with a whole lot of pride ain't gonna make it. Whoever is the most humble in this election, God will allow to, to dominate. <laughs> People with pride ain't gonna make it. And that's effective now. That's not effective in the in the future. That's right now. We even seen a, 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 a popular uh, sports people with that demonstrated pride, and we watched them fall on television. Yes, we, watched, we watched a, a Tyson say, "I'm the greatest in the world," and you saw him fall, and you saw Muhammad Ali with his mouth wide open, "I'm the greatest." I'm yeah. the fall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we have to. I like a butterfly. <laughs> we have to put ourselves with God, and whatever He allows to happen. That's that will happen. And he's satisfied yeah. in that. Yeah. That's right. And he already that. knows the outcome. Mm -hmm. Right. He's gonna he's gonna affect the outcome. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. That's why I say we need to be accepting because he already knows. And he knows what we can handle and he's gonna take care of us. Right. And he has already. And we just have to thank God for what he's done for us in our lives. And we're here. <laughs> That's right. true. Yeah. Uh, I, just, I just want to say, uh, I, uh, Reverend Lundy, I, want, I don't know if you have met um, Miss Bayes Fields, but Miss Fields has been on with us uh, ever since we started, I believe. Miss um, Fields, this is uh, Reverend Harry E. Lundy. Uh, he's been a member of our church for quite some time. He uh, he moved to um, to West Virginia, and on every Sunday morning, uh, what he does is that he he runs our, he's our, um, he's our social media pastor and he runs our Facebook live broadcast on Sundays at 11 o'clock. Um, Reverend Lundy is out of uh, Martinsburg, West Virginia. And he was a former member of, of Galilee Baptist Church before he joined in with us several years back. I uh, just wanted to introduce you uh, to him. He's a great man of God. If you want to see some of his sermons, which he preaches some very powerful messages, you can go to our, our YouTube page and look up uh, our Sunday morning service at 11 o'clock. Uh, last Sunday, he had a powerful message. Uh, he always has a powerful message. So when I get out of church, I come here and then him and I uh, work on the 11 o'clock broadcast. Uh, so I just want to make sure you know who he was. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very pleased. But I, I just want to say that... Um, I just want to give a testimony. I just want to just thank God, you know, for the marvelous and wonderful things that he has done in my life. Amen. And for all the great friends that God has placed in my life and good people like you all, there, there are many, many others. But right now I want to thank God for Ms. Fields, for Nicole, Reverend London, my wife, my beautiful wife, Pat, I don't Amen. let anybody talk about my wife except me. And when I do, I talk about her good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, sometimes Amen. she says, stop talking about me like that. I said, I'm going to keep talking. But she's a, she's a great help me uh, and does her job. And, you know, I just completed that 47-year career with the federal government. I am so thankful that I'm out of it. That's I'm a long out. time. Mm -hmm. That sure is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, 47 years, and my health is in great shape. Um, you know, I got my medical report. Um, I got a little few aches and pains here, but I can move. I can talk. You know, I got my vision. Uh, and, uh, everything's working. That's and so, I, I mean, I just thank God for that. I thank God for the ministry career that I've had. Started preaching in 1995 uh, at Peace Baptist Church and been pastoring for 17 years. I thank God for that because that, that is a real Amen. blessing. Amen. And to go through the trials and tribulations, fell down, God pushed me down, I got back up because his grace and his mercy. Uh, Reverend Lundy stood with me when I was in the midst of all my trials and tribulations. I'll never forget Reverend Lundy for his standing with me, helping me. And uh, we have a good, we have a good uh, relationship. And I'm just so grateful to have him around me. I'm around him. We laugh and joke. And for the education that God gave me, six academic degrees. I remember in the kindergarten, I was the slowest person in the room. Even when we went out to the play recess, everybody left me. That's how slow I was. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's bad. That's <laughs> still everything. <laughs> and so I just thank God for uh, everything that, that he's done. I've had a great life. I've traveled around the world. I've had so many different jobs. And you know, I mean, God has just been so good to me. And I've been blessed and I just thank him. I just want to put it out there. That I just thank God for every single, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank him. I thank him. So Amen. first lady, I just wanted to give that testimony, which I very seldom get a chance to do. Um, but through it all, God has just, you know, he's just been so good to me. And I'm just thankful to that. If I could just give my testimony. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Miss sure. Fields. Welcome this evening. Don't like to talk. Don't bother. Anything me. you like to share with us? <laughs> well, maybe we can read the scripture first, lady. Okay, she might be listening. You she know might. what? I just wanted to say something about our faith and and growth and just the things that the Lord has done for us. So I was looking at First Thessalonians four one. And it says, finally, brothers, we instructed you how to live in order to please God, as in fact, you are living. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. And when I think about that, if we live righteous before the Lord, he definitely continues to bless us more and more each day. I thank God for that. He allows us to um, get up in the morning, start our work day. Um, if you have to go out, you know, to come home safely. And um, I just always say he has my back as, as he has all of you all's back. He, he's just there for us all the time. I thank God for that because it could be another way for all of us. And it isn't. So I thank him. I thank him for the growth that he's allowed me to learn more about his word, to be a better Christian, to know that I need him in my life. There's so many people here that may not know what they're missing out on. I thank God for that's giving me the knowledge that I know I need them. I thank him for that. Amen. Um, Amen. Nicole? Mm -hmm. um, yes, I do. Uh, I would like to pray, actually. Um, my prayer is going to be a little different because I, I'm going to pray for all the opposition that people may have in their lives um, and demonic forces that may be attacking people. So um, that's what I like to pray for. So um, Lord, I'd like to pray for every opposer of my life, or my church members' lives, or my family's life. I want to pray away for every opposer of our destiny. I want to pray away every opposer of our vision. We pray that the Lord will remove them out, out of our way from the spiritual realm to the physical. We pray that God will remove every satanic projection against our lives. We pray that God will remove every demonic decree over our lives and our families' lives. Let it be uprooted in Jesus' name. We must understand that our enemies are closer than we can see. The enemy has used people around us to try and destroy us. We pray tonight, Lord, for clear vision. There are people in our lives right now that the enemy has snuck in disguise. They are there to destroy your ministry, your life, and your family's lives. We pray for all hypocrisy and hypocritical people in our lives to be exposed. We want to know tonight, Lord, who is for us. Anything opposing the will of God in our lives or our family's lives, we pray will be destroyed. Anything or anyone in our lives that resists the peace and the will of you, Lord, will be destroyed. We want to pray away the dream killers to be removed from our lives. 
the people that speak negatively and down on us constantly. We want to pray for them to be removed from our lives in Jesus' name. I pray that the will of God will prevail. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to cover us all in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Nicole. That was a wonderful prayer. Amen. You oh, know, I was thinking about I what worked you on it. I've been working on it for some days, but um, it came to my heart because I hear so many not just not just stuff that I've experienced, but just people that I know who <laughs> go through so many horrible things. And not just that, I've even witnessed it with going to Servants for Christ, what Pastor Jones went through years ago. And so um, I just, I, the, it, it came to my heart to pray for that because there is so much opposition that people have in their lives. And sometimes Satan does send people in disguise to pretend like they're for you and they're not at all. And they're there to destroy your life. And you may not understand that at that time. So um, it just came to me like three or four days ago. And I was like, when we have Bible study, this is what I'm going to pray. So amen. Amen. Thank you. It was a wonderful prayer. I was thinking about when you were praying for the um the dream uh, killers. killers. Oh yeah. Oh killers. yeah. Oh uh -huh. yes. Because I've had uh -huh. many dream right. killers. I tell somebody, hey, I'm gonna do this. You know, mm -hmm. I had an office job for many years, and when I said, hey, I'm gonna go to beauty school, like, what are you thinking? That's not a job. <laughs> You're gonna be right. just everything horrible that you could say to somebody. I, all my family members said it to me. Mm -hmm. Even my own father. I you remember. Know, I rem some terrible. You know? I remember when you told me about it. I'm like, go for it and do the do the very best you can. And I said, keep me posted on how you make out. You probably forgot that, but I remember. I yeah, remember. I remember, I remember standing in front of the church and talking about it. But you, yeah. you guys were supportive. But right. you were the only people that were supportive because nobody else was supportive. Everyone told me that it's just, I'm going to fail. It's not going to work out. That that's not um, a career path to take when you're a single parent. Just everything that you could, a dream killer. Yeah. And there are people, millions of people right now who have dream killers in their lives, in their ear, mm -hmm. telling them this Can't isn't going to work. Can't do it. Don't do it. That's, That's right. right. Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey talked about that a lot when he talked about how his mother tried to kill his dream because he wanted to be on television and he got embarrassed in class because his teacher sent a no home to teach this boy how he's supposed to act or respond or something like that. And his father came home and his mother wanted him to beat Steve Harvey because he said he wanted to be on TV. Mm -hmm. And to make a long story short, you see the result of his father. Uh, encouraging him. Can I read a scripture first, lady? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so I've got two scriptures I want to read. One is First Peter, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, not you know, one, it's one of my favorite scriptures. First Peter chapter one, verse number seven. I love to preach this sermon. Uh, and the sermon title when I preach it is, is called uh, Something Greater Than Gold. Nicole, you probably heard it before, uh, but the scripture read that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And then in chapter four, also of first Peter is, is the same words uh, almost. But this goes on in chapter 4, verse 12, and it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. And so the trials of your faith, your faith is much more precious than that of gold, uh, because gold perishes, but your faith is spiritual and eternal. 
And so when you compare the spiritual and the eternal with the secular, your faith will take you through eternity, but the goal will perish. And then when chapter four, verse 12 teaches us, thinking that strange concerning the fiery trial is spoken of in the book of Ephesians chapter uh, six, uh, about putting on your, the, the, how God, how the, the shield of, uh, the shield of faith will quench the fiery dots that come up against you. Mm -hmm. You know, thinking that strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing uh, happened unto you. So when these people come up and they are naysayers and they are people who are uh, dream stealers or people that are negative, you know, normally I don't accept it. I don't care who they are. Believe me, when we started this church, Serving for Christ Baptist Church, uh, 17 years ago, my wife said, you and I are going to do most of the work and people are going to turn around and walk away. We had to put our resources in. I said, you know what? It's not really dependent on us. It's dependent upon God. And we moved forward. But everything she said came true. And and, and more on top of that, which is the prayer that Nicole just prayed. I, I just prayed. I'm so thankful to you all. Uh, but the fiery trial will come into our life. But we shouldn't think it's strange because that is something that we are going to experience as, as human beings. Uh, Satan is going to try us at every level. He's going to try us in our finances. He's going to try us in love, sex, alcohol, and drugs. He's going to try us on our jobs. Again, our income, our automobiles. But I, I'm just a firm believer that when we tithe and we give money to the Lord and give our offering to the Lord in our service and our finances, God is going to bless us beyond measure. And so thank you very much, First Lady, for letting me read the scripture. Uh, it feels good tonight that I don't have to teach, that I can actually just sit here and, and kind of relax and go through this with you all. Thank you so much. You're welcome. God bless you. Yes. You know, I have a scripture to read, and it's talking about joy. I, and it comes from Isaiah 61, 10. And it says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. You know, I think that everybody tonight is thinking about, uh, well, are talking about how they've been blessed and where they've come from and where they are now. And it may have started out not looking like you will be successful or succeed in what your endeavors were, but it turns out that you've done pretty good. And just by the, the five of us that are on the, uh, the line tonight, I, I would say that so far, everybody seems to be okay. Hi, Trustee Strickland, how you doing? I see you joining in. Yeah, but she, um, she hasn't connected, hi, Carolyn. Still. She's still connected, <laughs> she's not on yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I, I just, I'd say that, um, you know, I think, I can speak for everyone when I say that we've had a pretty good life to, just so far. You know, it may not have started out, it may not have gotten everything you wanted, but you're doing okay. Is that a true statement? Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. You just have to thank, thank God, God for, that. for the blessings. And thank God for mm -hmm. the blessings that, yeah. you know, I, 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 one of my former coworkers is three ladies I work with, my wife know them. And oftentimes I take all three of them out. I don't pay for their meal, but we go out for dinner because we were former co-workers. Pat know every one of them. She had um, that she has diabetes and 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 she called and she said, uh, I have diabetes. So I got on the phone, prayed for her. Uh, and because she had lost her vision, she had double vision about a month ago. And so she called me tonight and I said, uh, how's your eyes? She said, I, she said, I'm driving again. So she went from being blind to driving again. I said, you know, one of the things that we have to do, that was tonight, I said, as God had blessed you upon our prayer to restore your vision, he did. And I said, as you're going through, you pray to God to heal your body and you thank him for healing your body as though it has already happened. I said, but when you get on the other side and God has healed you, that's when you shout and you say hallelujah and thank you, God, and you pray again. Most people, when they need something, they pray. And then they forget about it. I say pray and praise, pray and praise 
And then when you get on the other side, shout and then pray again. So we prayed again tonight. So you're right, First Lady. We are we are seriously blessed in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, First Lady, I have a scripture I like to read. Uh, okay. It's coming from Jeremiah chapter 9, beginning with verse 23. Okay. And it reads like this. It says, Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glory, glory in this, that he understands and knows me that I am the Lord exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. And, and what's so amazing to me about this scripture is that God says that he delights in exercising loving kindness, mm. judgment, as actually should be justice, mm. as in justice and righteousness in the earth. And then I just think about how actually God came after us mm. to, to help us along. And, 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 and what bothers me is a lot of people don't show any gratitude back toward God for what God has done. Being the fact that he uh, gave his only begotten son, still we're not giving God enough gratitude and not enough thank you and not enough, even not enough praises and glory for he really is worthy to be praised. Yeah. When you look up at all this, what you see that everything that God's made out there, uh, uh, mm -hmm. it, it almost impel you to give him honor and glory. It seems like a person would have to hold back not to give God on and on. That would be an agent of Satan causing someone to hold back from giving God all the honor and glory when you just look around you and to know the fact that God delights in giving us loving kindness and, and justice and righteousness in the earth. All we can, all I can imagine doing is just thanking him and waking up every day, giving him honor and glory, honor and glory for the rest of our, for eternity. Because yeah. God is really, really good. And, and, and his love is so great that uh, we can't, uh, it's so high, so wide, so deep, so long that it passes out, really passes our knowledge. But God has really have been awesome toward us. And, and and uh, uh, allowing this pandemic, you, you can almost understand that how we've been so, how he's been so good to us and we've been so mean to him. People ain't <laughs> thinking about God. A lot of people ain't even thinking, maybe most of the world ain't. <laughs> I mean, and so I just I give him all the honor and glory that, that I possibly can and I pray that other people begin to uh, be grateful to God for all that he has done and all that he's purpose purpose to do for us because he sure has right. been good. and he's been good to me too. in my 55 yes he has he, he has mm -hmm. been good to all of us you know um I, I i know that that's something that we have to learn about the lord and how um he has kept us and and I would I, I told this to Pastor Jones. It's been some years ago now, but um, you know, God doesn't ask for much, but he he's protecting us all the time. And I say that because you know you read and he asks for uh, ten percent of your earnings and and tithing. And 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 you know what that tithing does when you belong to a church. It helps the the upkeep of the church and you know, the equipment you have to purchase for it or the insurance or just to keep it going. And I was cleaning up one day and this has been a while ago. And I, I found one of my old tithing sheets and um, I'm going to say it was probably like 30 something years ago. And 
I knew what I made then, and I looked at what I um, had put in church. I was so embarrassed. I, I, I wanted to cry. I didn't know. I, you know, it's something I guess you have to learn. But I said, you know what? God didn't treat me like how I, I gave back to him. And I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that he didn't. Because I, I looked at that and I, I just really felt bad. I don't know if you all understand, but when, when you, when you, when you um, learn more about, you know, God's work and when you learn how he protects you and then when he tells you about tithing and offering and, and, you know, what you should give back and what you wasn't doing, you know, you just thank him for just overlooking, I guess, my ignorance at the time. <laughs> But I, I am so happy that I've learned how to be a better person and I've learned how to um, be um, a giving person and a, a better Christian and reading his word and knowing what I should do. But, you know, I'm not going to bring myself up because I didn't know, but I should have. But now I do. And I thank God for just staying there with me going through my learning. <laughs> That's what I would say. Well, um, if, if, if you don't mind, I can, I can, uh, hey, you know, as many times as we stay in the, um, in the church and, you know, we move forward with, um, trying to educate people and help people to understand the essence of tithing, you know, one of the things that kind of, um, gives me concern mm -hmm. is, is people seem to think that when we are teaching about the tithe and the offering, that the money's going into our pocket, uh, the minister and the officers of the church, but it's not. As you just pointed out, the offering go to support the church, the building, the insurances, the light, the light bills, snow removal, you know, mm -hmm. telephone, television, electricity and all that. But people for some reason seem to think that it's, uh, they put in 10, $12, and they seem to think that that's going to be enough. You know, I was thinking about during the pandemic when people come to church, just go ahead and say, here's the Pepco bill. You haven't been tithing. So um, take this Pepco bill and pay it. That'll stop. People stop coming to church. <laughs> yeah, it would. <laughs> the door, you say, hey, look, uh, here's the water bill. I know you haven't been tithing. <laughs> People will say, uh, well, I'm not going to that church anymore. <laughs> they don't even take up the offer. Yep. They pay you a bill. <laughs> well, you know, you do say that, but um, church, my, my Can you old church. That? That? Listen, they don't even get a check. Hey, listen to this. They don't even do your chance to get a good song in. You, you can't even hear a song for they hand you a bill. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Nobody but I know, um, you, can, you, I, you know, you know what, Pastor Jones? What <laughs> about tithing? If you don't, okay, I just if you don't give anything, right? Right. It's gonna be taken back from you in That's another right. way. Right. <laughs> I, I can just say that for myself. Like, if you don't give nothing, say I come in there every week looking like Diana Ross, and I don't give you a dollar ever. I don't put nothing in church. I'm yeah. not giving nothing. It's going to be taken back from me in another okay. way. It's going to be taken away from me in another way. That's right. And That's there right. is nobody who attends church on a regular basis who cannot agree with that. It's going to be taken from you in another way. So if you got the 50 bucks and you say, no, I'm going to Red Lobster later, it, it's going to be taken from you. Red Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> I say, enjoy your meal. That's right. <laughs> but let me yeah. say this, as, as much as we uh, look at that, you know, I take it very seriously. Uh, you know, and the thing I like about our church, we've been surviving on limited funds for 17 years, and all we've ever done is taken a one offering. You know, we don't, some churches you go to, you say, let me empty my pockets before I go into church, because they're going to take up three offers. I know my, <laughs> my, I'm with the past church in Gary, Indiana. That's what uh, I was going to say. CME Methodist Church, uh, Israel CME Methodist Church, I went to visit. 
And the pastor would go and take up the offering. And as they take up the offering, they would actually go into the, in, into the minister's room and they would count the offering. They would, they would count the offering. And if they didn't have enough, they would come back out. They would come back out and they would simply say, uh, don't nobody leave the church. We need to take us some more, more money <laughs> so if we can pay the, the building so we can pay the rent. That's but one true. of the things that I wanted to point out uh, is when we read this scripture in the church, I don't think people really believe it, Nicole. Will a man rob God? Yeah. Yet you have robbed me, but you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Now, the thing about it is that what I try to teach people on this is many people actually rob God while he's present. Huh. They don't wait till God oh. turn his back. They rob God while he's present huh. in his face. Let me let me read a comment from uh, uh, from from uh, Miss Fields. Miss mm -hmm. uh, Bayes Fields has a comment. She's off the mic now. Uh, first thing she says is. Despite all the turmoil and prejudice in this world, God still give us grace. He's a worth and just God. I'm blessed to bless many who are having rough patches. Thank you so much for that. And Nicole said amen to that. And amen. then Ms. Mills came amen. back and she's off the mic now. She's, she's asking, please, please keep her uncle, Mr. Owen Goodwin in prayer, his children, who has a substance problem, has alienated and uh, did some things in the family. It's in the, it, it, it's in the chat, you all can read it. And exploited their father by selling his boat, truck and worldly possession. Wow. But God is good for me to help him and allow him to get some rest. So pray that he handle these rough patches in his eighties, you know. And I had some situations like that, Miss Fields, in my own family, uh. where my mother came into some money and some of my uh, relatives swindled my mother out of her money, and that was all the money that she had. And so I do wow. understand. I do understand um, the seriousness of what you are asking for. And I have I have a nephew right now that is that is deep in debt and is doing substance abuse as well. So yes, we will keep that in prayer. But you off the mic if you want to, you know, say something or something like that. That's that's good if not well well thank you pastor um it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks because um he's my uncle by marriage because my mother's sister married him and they have five children and not one of them not not none of his children are able to be there for them as they get older however my aunt is divorced from him but i just want to keep him in prayer because I was working the election and his daughter who lives in DC contacted me and she reached out to tell me that my dad is having some problems. Well, I haven't talked to him. And when I finally did talk to him, he had to go to court because the marshals had came and had the her sister um, removed because she had to take in 20 minutes every or her possessions, I guess, because she had to leave because they had locked him in his house that changed the locks. Um, they were smoking drugs and drinking. And, and I even feel bad for my cousin because when you have a substance abuse and, and you're drinking with alcohol, you're not of yourself and who, who you could be or your full potential. Mm -hmm. And so I'm praying for her as well because this is something she's been struggling with for years. And so, um, but God was good. And I want you to keep him in prayer because this is not a young person. He's in his eighties. And when I spoke with him last week, he couldn't even talk. And she had, he knew nothing about computers. She went online, created an account and he gets his social security on the third. And so I was blessed and enough that these people listened to me. I had put in an APS, um, I put in an APS uh, complaint on, on them and I really didn't want to do that but he was suffering. This was a man who was 250 pounds and when I saw him over the weekend, he was a hundred pounds. They hadn't mm -hmm. fed him, he, um, they didn't, he was you know, bathing or anything and, he, and how, what happened was he was trying to run out the house to go to a neighbor while they was throwing trash out and one of the neighbors saw him. So he, he's been through a lot and I talked to him today 
and I turned his house phone on so that he can get some meals on wheels in Merlin. And I talked to his bank and it's, and it's not about just the worldly possession. He told me today, I just, I'm glad that you did what you did so I can just get some rest because he said he hadn't slept in a long time. So in just giving his testimony, please keep him in prayer because I, that's, that's your children doing this. And I just said, wow, that's amazing to me that these are my first cousins that would do something to their father. And I've never seen a family. They got everybody intact. And it's just terrible because you can't treat people like that. Mm -hmm. no. And so Amen. just please keep them in prayer because yeah, that's have, very disturbing. Funny. We're gonna have Reverend London to pray for him, or or, or even uh, or even uh, Reverend Alvin Williams to pray for him, and uh, the other prayer requests that we've lifted up. But I, I just want to say, a lot of times when I was teaching the class at the Bible College and the seminar, and my heart is with you, my sister. I'm shedding tears with you. Uh, but as I was teaching classes at the seminary, um, one class that I taught was uh, uh, the Pentateuch, and I was in the Book of Deuteronomy. And a word came up, a word came up, and I said, I, I got to figure out what this word means, depravity. And once I looked it up, I started to understand the essence of corruption and the moral wickedness in mankind. It helped me to understand uh, why people do the things they do, including members in my own family. And, and people that are, 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 are wicked. So depravity is moral corruption and wickedness. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what drives people to do a lot of the things that we don't understand why somebody would go kill their nephew, baby, sister, brother, niece, or commit right. sexual assault or whatever, murder or steal, rob. It's the moral depravity. And, you know, when we look at what we learn in, uh, in the epistles, I think it's first, first John, second John, two sixteen, uh, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. All that stuff is wrapped up in this moral depravity. And you're right, the people that are having this sexual addiction, I mean, this a uh, 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 drug addiction, right, uh, is really having some very serious psychological and emotional problems as well. And they're not in their right mind. Pat has a has a, a, a first cousin that was using PCP. He came home and, and was arguing with his father and stabbed his father to death doing drugs. Mm -hmm. And that still has impacted our family in a way that uh, we can't even explain. He's in the jail now. Right. And this was several years back. And um, he, 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 when he comes to his census in jail, the guys are working him over a little bit. And he said, don't. I'm gonna call my father. He gonna come up here and take care of this. And they said, "Don't you realize the reason that you're in here mm -hmm. is because you killed your father last night?" Mm -hmm. So these drugs, you know, Satan come to kill, steal, and destroy. It broke my heart that my mother only had a little bit of money, and then her own children took her what she had and used it because they were depraved and didn't weren't able to take care of themselves. So yes, we're gonna we're gonna lift up uh, Uncle uh, Owen Gooden. Oh, and good one in prayer. Um, but uh, before we have the prayer, uh, Pat, did you did you want to go say something else, or you wanted to ask Reverend Alvin Williams or Reverend London to pray? I mean, I don't know how you want to do that. Yeah, I, I would like for one of you all to pray. Um, I know uh, Reverend Alvin came on a little late, and we're having a different type of Bible study tonight. Usually, we're in the Book of Revelation, but tonight we are just having praise and worship and testimony time. Right. And um, I don't know if you heard what Sister Fields was talking about with her uncle. If you would like to say a few words about yourself or if you'd like to lift her up and her uncle in prayer, you can do that at this time. Uh, also, I'd like if, you, if you're going to pray, sorry, but... pray for our church and mm -hmm. also okay. for uh, my mother, Lula, Lula Jones, as well as and Gertie uh, Edmund. As well as Gertie Edmund. Uh, Gertie Edmund, okay. Lula Jones. And uh, Red, uh, Reverend Franchetta Payne. Right. Mm -hmm. And also uh, Miss Audrey Fields. Oh, hold on, Pat, for one second. Right. Also, Miss Bayes okay. Fields, who's on the line with us. Right. I'm sorry, Pat, go right. All right. Here. And, and you have Owen Goodwin, right? 
that's her that's her you uncle. said good miss you said Phil, good one? her uncle is um uh, yes owen's good one yeah owen he, good okay he, owen he good he was one. giving testimony that 80 year old who who was experiencing some um uh, some trauma with his kids and, and being abused all right well first of all thank thank god for being here tonight I give honor to my lord and savior jesus christ and Again, to uh, Dr. Jones and uh, Sister Pat, I appreciate uh, this opportunity. Um, been a busy day, but I thank God. I thank God even for the busy day. <laughs> Any day is a good day that you're above ground. Uh, I want to say, first of all, Jesus joy to everybody on the, on the call. And in, spite of, and in spite of all that we're going through, even as a nation and as a people, uh, God is still sitting on the throne and he's still looking after us and he still cares. Um, the, the Bible, so Bible says, cast all your cares on him for he careth for you. And so I want to extend that scripture uh, to, uh, I believe it's Sister Fields, or the, the caller that I heard on uh, the, just before. Uh, he still cares for, for, for uh, your dad or the, uh, the, the 80 year old that's been taken advantage of. And uh, a lot of times we, we go through and even during this time, we feel forgotten because people, uh, it's amazing. People are doing this time because they're desperate, Dr. Jones, they're desperate and um, because of experiences in their life and they take it out on other people. And in doing so, they take from other people. But the thing I, I, I've learned at least as a personal conviction is when you take from somebody else, you're legally or wrong. Um, then that thing becomes a curse to you. You may think you're getting away with it. They may think whether it's money or whether it's abuse, but I believe in the, the law of reaping and sowing. And if you treat someone wrong, you treat a child of God wrong and you do wrong, somewhere in your life, you're going to reap that. That's what I personally believe, the law of reaping and sowing. You cannot just do wrong, do wrong, run over people and nothing happens to you. But I pray God's peace over, over, uh, over your dad and the situation, uh, because sometimes we can even get rattled, even during this season, um, the pandemic, different, maybe loved ones have passed away, or maybe loved ones have gotten sick, and maybe things have happened financially. But I pray the peace of God, because the Bible says he'll keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. And I believe the reason why we can be in that, have that peace is because even all that we go through, we know that as a child of God, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and for, the, for them that are called to his purpose. So I believe that even in the midst of that, God is still on the throne and looking out even for his child. So I'm going to pray a prayer, but I just wanted to just encourage everyone on this call, no matter what is happening. And it seems like um, the evildoers are, are getting away. They're not. They're not getting away with it. It might happen for a season, but then you look around and turn around, those same people will be struggling. Uh, I, had a, I had a former brother-in-law, Dr. Jones, that treated my older sister very badly, very badly. Now, he's not around today, but you know, it's a, it's, it's a bad thing to be turned over in, in, into the judgment of God. And he had juvenile diabetes. And I ended up uh, along with several family members, had to take him back and forth to Washington Hospital Center. His limbs turned black. I witnessed that. And he had to have a lot of amputations before he passed away, died miserably. But I remember all the abuse that he, he extended to my sister. And all I said was, you're in the hands of a, a judgment of God now. All the dirt and all the stuff that you thought you were getting away with and all that stuff. And, you know, I, yes, I prayed for his soul. But um, again, when, you, when you're turned over to the judgment of God, I believe in the law of reaping and sowing. But God is still merciful too. <laughs> so he's still a loving God and, uh, and he's still yet watching over us. So uh, as I've been asked to do, I will share in a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we say thank you for your grace and your mercy. If it wasn't for your mercy, Lord, we'd be consumed on this day. So we say thank you, even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of chaos and even, okay, the election, God, and there's a lot going on, a lot of voices, and some may be disturbed, some may be confused. Some people 
may uh, be may not know what to do and have lost direction. But we ask you now, one, for the peace of God, oh God, that surpasses all of our understanding. We ask you, God, for to step in now, even uh, on this, those individuals on the prayer list. Oh God, uh, we have, uh, I believe, Reverend Mrs. Gertie. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Owens. Uh, Sister, uh, we have Sister Fields. We will lift them up right now in the name of Jesus. Um, Lord, one by one, name by name, Lord, there are people out there that are sick and that are hurting right now. So God, I pray, I pray, I pray this prayer for those that are hurting and those that have been hurt even by loved ones. God, let there be mercy. Let there, let there be something, uh, someone that will step in and that will help the situation. But I pray, first of all, for the healing of the family. Mm, there's so many families, oh God, that are, that are hurting each other. So I pray for the healing of the family. Hallelujah. Right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your Holy Ghost and your anointing, oh God, flow right now. And those family members, oh God, that are, that are committing the abuse. So I ask, ask your God now to change the mindset. Let them repent from what they have done. And I ask your God for the protection of that 80-year-old, oh God. I ask you for the restoration of that of that 80 year old God that, that maybe have lost weight and maybe he's not eating like he should, but Lord, some way, somehow the Lord will make a way somehow, Lord, you will, you will provide him. You'll uh, make a way of provision uh, for him. Lord, look on those who, again, who may be ailing in their bodies right now. Those who may even have, have been infected by COVID-19 Oh God, Lord, just because they have uh, gotten a diagnosis and maybe have gotten infected doesn't mean that they have to die. So, Lord, right now, I decree and declare under the sound of my voice, oh, God, those that are suffering, oh, God, with this infection, oh, God, that they be healed right now in the name of Jesus. And not just that, any infirmities, oh, God, in their body. Lord, you're still, you're still yet healing. You're still yet saving. You're still yet restoring. So I thank you, God, because you are saving God. You are healing God right now in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I want to pray this say this scripture of God, because it, it, what I've learned is when you pray the word of God and when you pray the scriptures of God, something happens, oh God, and the enemy, enemy can't do anything with the word of God. So the word of God says, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So God, when we find ourselves in situations, oh God, where the enemy comes against us, let us call on the name of the Lord. Let us call on the name of Jesus, oh God, because there's healing in that name. Oh yeah. God, there's salvation in that name. Yeah. Oh God, oh God, there's protection in that name. So God, right now in the name of Jesus, and even those that have to be on the front lines, oh God, as nurses and doctors and medical personnel, we ask your God, we protect them right now. And Lord, even Oh, God, the Servants for Christ Ministries. Mm, I ask your God to touch and, um, and be with the angel of this house. I ask your God to strengthen him right now. He's a warrior on the wall. Oh, God, he's, he's looking out, oh, God, and, and going out, oh, God, and, and bringing in souls, oh, God, to the kingdom of God through the airways. So I, got, I ask you to expand, oh, God, his territory. Hallelujah. Oh, God, and give him the knowledge and the wisdom. Oh, God, he, along with his wife, Right now, God, give them just what they need, the wisdom, stamina, and knowledge of God to expand for the kingdom of God. I ask your God to bless their marriage, bless their ministry, right now in the name of Jesus. So God, all the way from the musician to the ushers, to the trustees, oh God, to the ministers, right now in the name of you. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you right now for this opportunity. And Lord, and we're looking for the testimonies because the Bible says that they have overcome by the word of their testimonies, oh God, and by the blood of the Lamb. So we thank you right now for victory because victory belongs to people. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his, for his, for his mercy endureth forever, oh God, and let the redeemed of the Lord say so, oh God, who has been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. So we pray this prayer and we thank you, God, for this opportunity because the Bible says for us to always to pray and, all, and, uh, and not faint. So again, bless those under the sound of my voice. Bless those, oh God, on our prayer list tonight. Help us to have faith because faith, oh God, the substance of faith, uh, oh God, and faith without works is dead. So help us, oh God, to always have faith in you because, oh God, you're the only thing, the only thing that's stable in this world that's turned upside down. As we go forth by faith and not by sight, in Jesus' name we pray. We thank you for this opportunity, Sister Pat. Amen. We turn it back over to you.
Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you so much. Amen. Amen. Beautiful Amen. prayer. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, if I can just move on, um, one of the things that uh, when we look at the book of Revelation, we're not going to teach on it tonight. Next week, we're going to pick up on chapter 11. But one of my favorite scriptures there, uh, Reverend Lundy, is it always amazed me that when you turn the book of Revelation, the last chapter, chapter 22, and you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten verses left. In the whole Bible, you got 10 verses left. You start at uh, verse number 11. And it says, he, the last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, he said, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And I oftentimes ask myself the question, as God is closing out his holy word, he comes down to the last 10 or 11 verses in the Bible, and he's still talking about the same thing. I also ask myself, couldn't he find something else to say? I'm not questioning God. But couldn't he find something else to say? And then the answer came back to me, no, because he's emphasizing that if you choose not to follow him, his ordinances, his statutes, and his commands, then continue to do what you do. Just continue to do what you do. Because God, God has says uh, in the same book of Revelation, uh, do, not, do not change. In verse number 18, he said, for I testify to every man that here's the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And next to the last two verses, he says, and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. I just want to say that those are very profound words that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ delivers to us. So we need to be very mindful of, of, of um, how we handle the word of God. First lady, it's, it's back in your hands. We're not going to be on much long because we want to give people a chance to eat their dinner and so forth. But um, anybody else yeah. have anything before the first lady? Anybody else have anything else you want to say or pray or give a testimony? Anybody? Go right ahead. With regard to that scripture you just read about, if you uh, wicked, continue to be, and so forth and so on. When you look at all through the Bible, when God chose them a people, the Israelites, they will mess up, and then they will repent, and God will forgive them and bring them back. And they will turn right back around and mess up again. All through the Bible, they just kept messing up. Uh, repenting, God forgiving them, and God taking them back, and they would turn around all right on through, and they're still in a messed up condition right now, the he, the Jews, and, and of course God's going to take them back and forgive yeah. them, and, it, and it's going, and that's why God say, if you, uh, uh, if you have sinned, continue, and if you come, come, God has done everything for us. He has poured out all of his heart toward mankind. And, and even during the days of Noah, uh, they had the Neph 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 Nephilims that went into the people. So he, he uh, uh, destroyed everything, but Noah, because Noah didn't have those, had not been uh, corrupted with the Nephilims. And then he had, and then when, when Israel had, was given the land, mm -hmm. and then God had sent them out to destroy certain people, some of the people had Nephilims in them. And he told them to destroy everybody, the babies, the animals, and the so forth, don't bring back nothing. He's still trying to protect us. He didn't want us to be contaminated with the fallen uh, demons and so forth. But so so God is really, really concerned about mankind. He 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 bent over backwards for us. That's why I had to do that scripture uh, of his perseverance. Because <laughs> he's That's really right. so 
we just ought to just surrender to him, just give ourselves to God, say, God, we are sorry, just help us, guide us, lead us, and let us follow his word. Yeah, I tell you, the sermon that you preached on Sunday on our Gospel Truth broadcast, uh, I wish everybody would go take a look at that sermon. It's, it's on our Facebook page uh, on Serving for Christ on YouTube. Reverend London preached a very powerful uh, sermon. And you, know, you talked about the Nephilim. And, you, and, and I believe your uh, description of them uh, was, was dealing with uh, uh, the fallen ones. And I, I know that back in the book of Genesis chapter six, that uh, the Nephilim tried to come down and co-mingle with mankind, which led God to say that it had grieved him in his heart that he had made man in the first place. Right. And that's when he brought the flood on because of the Nephilim trying to co-mingle with mankind, which was again, an unnatural relationship. And God has told us in Leviticus 18.22 that even when a man lie with a man as a woman, that it is an abomination. And God does not believe in unnatural um, right. relationships. So um, I really appreciate that. And the sermon that Reverend London preached on, on Sunday, uh, past Sunday was protection of the seed was the beginning of it all. And he preached around Genesis chapter three, verse 15. You can hear that sermon on the Gospel Truth on our Gospel Truth broadcast on YouTube. We have a whole series, almost 110 videos uh, on YouTube of the Gospel Truth, our Bible studies and our teachings. It's about 100, maybe about 115 now. And so we just thank God for you, Reverend Lundy, for your service to our church and what you've done. Um, we've been joined by Miss uh, uh, Dr. Leslie Pickens. And Dr. Pickens, I appreciate you coming on this evening. We uh, changed the format tonight to give everyone a break. We're trying to get off the phone. I mean, off, this, off the broadcast, but more people keep joining. <laughs> and uh, so, so what we did was that we're not having a teaching tonight on Revelation chapter 11. We'll pick that up next week. Tonight we're having witness, testimony, singing, yeah, yeah. Uh, scripture, whatever you want. We got like a free night. And Reverend Lundy, you know, he's down in Harrisburg, West Virginia. Uh, but he is assistant to the pastor at Serving for Christ Baptist Church, and uh, he's he's like our, our internet pastor on Sundays. So we, we're glad he was able to join us. Alvin, Reverend Alvin Williams, uh, his wife came and preached to us past Sunday. I don't know where she is. I don't know why he's sitting up here on the phone by himself, uh, but he know how much. I told him in the pulpit that I love his wife, and my wife was present. Amen. But they're a beautiful couple, and we're always happy. Uh, uh, Reverend Williams, he, uh, he's a, a musician. He's a musician. So they are good friends, too. Uh, but, Pat, I'm turning back over to your hands. Since people just coming on, we might want to have a little more fellowship time. Yeah. I didn't know, Dr. Tickens, if you want to say anything. Of, um, you want you have a testimony or you may want to say something about the election, how good God is, or just happy to be here today. <laughs> Thank you for accommodating me. I apologize for being late. Um, okay. I've been at work all day with no access to TV, radio, or anything. So I didn't, I'm almost scared to find out what's going on. So. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not over yet. <laughs> Somebody can have to debrief me. Uh, my husband had to say that. I haven't said two words to him. I just came straight to the back and uh, turned on my computer so I could catch the last few minutes. Um, and I'll go talk to him in a minute. <laughs> right now, right now, I said uh, 253, still at 253, it's been that way most of the day. The 253 electoral votes for uh, Biden, and it's 213 electoral votes for uh, Trump. The last time I looked, it, it appeared though uh, Biden had a, a 2 million uh, vote lead on the uh, popular vote. So it's anticipated that the way it's going right now, the few states that are left that uh, Biden might be able to close this out this evening. We don't know for sure. Thank you for mm -hmm. the update. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, Sister Carolyn Strickland, would you like to say anything with us tonight? Or Donna? Either one of you hey, want Donna. to say anything this evening? Let me say hi, Donna. Uh, I have missed you. I've missed you being on. 
We're so glad that you were able to come and join us uh, this evening. I hope that you're doing well. Been praying for you. Yeah. Okay. And Carlin, Carlin didn't unmute. Yeah. Okay, so I, so I, I tell you what, I, I'll give y'all a big treat. Since I give y'all a big treat. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, Still I will follow, though no one join me. Still I will follow, no turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that. Enjoy that. We're going to ask you, <laughs> Reverend uh, Williams, to play a song for us. <laughs> <laughs> You should uh, accompany him. <laughs> I know, man. Where's your keyboard at? You coming on first time? I know. Keyboard? What's going on? <laughs> oh, laughing, Lord. Man. It wasn't that funny, man. It don't be laughing at me. <laughs> the, the Bible says make a joyful noise. A yeah, joyful it was a noise. Before the Lord. <laughs> joyful noise. <laughs> I, I, look, I, I give him my best shot, man. Let me tell you something. If that don't work, I do it right. Oh, Lord. <laughs> We better start uh, talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I started doing the tambourine. <laughs> Sister oh, Pat, man. go get him. Go get him, Sister I'm Pat. I'm telling you. <laughs> Somebody sing or something. Go. There we go. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Well, we're not gonna hold you much longer. I, um we I thank all of you for coming on this evening. And you know, we just, you know, today, like we said, it was different. We didn't, we didn't go into our Bible study, and we did not um, learn. We were, we weren't taught on Revelation. We will be back next week, Wednesday yeah. at seven, and we will be in chapter eleven of Revelation. Yeah. So please be here and read over chapter eleven. If you have any questions or concerns, or just want to learn more about Revelation, come on back. And we just say we thank God for each one of you for coming in tonight and sharing your testimonies and your praises. And if you have anything else you want to say before we close out, um, this is that time to do that. If not, we'll go ahead and close out. So I know like Dr. Pickens just getting off from work. She probably want to eat, talk to her husband and everyone else may have other things or just watch TV and see what the results are of the election. So, um, I thank you all for being here this evening. God bless you all. Um, anyone else have anything to say? No, we're good. I'm good. I'm okay. Good. And if not, I just want to say, when we, um, just like what Reverend Lundy was talking about, that God just is a forgiving God. You go out there, you do something wrong, he can forgive you. Go back and do it again, he forgives you. You know, it was one more scripture I want to say, and it comes from Luke 6, 35 through 38. And it's talking about forgiveness. And it says to us, but love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your father is merciful. 
Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, runneth over and will pour into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And with that being said, God hold bless on, each one of you. Have yeah, a wonderful Pat, evening. Hold on, hold on, Pat. Pastor, I'm sorry, Pastor Jones. Yeah, before you close out, we're going to have our, uh, our outro because mm -hmm. Alan hasn't seen it yet. And then we, Reverend London, when we come back, we're going to ask you to close us out. So just hold on, everybody, while we do our, our outro. Just give me one second. Hi, this is First Lady Minister Patricia Ann Jones. Thank you for watching our broadcast, The Gospel Truth. Please visit our website. You can visit our Facebook page on Servants for Christ Baptist Church or our YouTube page, Search Servants for Christ Baptist Church. To support our ministry, visit ServantsForChristInc.org. Our church phone number is 240-244-2564. For prayer requests, call 240-241-0849. Or you can always email us on slcbcministry at gmail.com. Thank you for viewing our broadcast. And our I scripture for this year, 2020, is Hebrews 11, one, walking Lord, in faith. So again, thank you for watching our show. And always come and visit us at Servants for Christ Baptist Church, where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. Jerry W. Jones, Jr. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye. Salvation comes to those who ask, but many will not Take the path, they will live on. Amen. Reverend Lundy, could you close us out in prayer, please? Oh, before Reverend Lundy comes, I just wanted uh, one more word that we have from Sister Fields. And she was saying the voices were welcoming, though it was Rance A. Bishop, Rance Allen, rest in peace. Thank you, Reverend Avon Williams, for your prayer. It was a refuel, much needed. Amen. And, uh, well, you said God bless everyone. And now I'm going to turn it over to Reverend Lundy. Thank God you. bless. Let us pray. Almighty eternal God, our Father, fill our hearts through the power of your Holy Spirit in our inner being, that Jesus Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. Lord, we pray that we being rooted and established in your love may have power together with all the saints to be able to grasp the height, the width, the depth, and the length of the love of Jesus Christ. And to know this love that surpasses our knowledge, fill us to a measure of all the fullness of you, almighty God that we may be able to go forward loving you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and loving our neighbor as ourself and walking before you fully pleasing and fruitful in every good work. Lord, bless those that were on this program, this broadcast tonight. Help those who were brought out what was hurting them. Please bless, uh, Uncle uh, Owen uh, Goodwin and, and Mrs. Fields and Pastor and First Lady and, and all the ones that are here on the program, Lord. Guide them and lead them the way you would have them to go. For we thank you and give you all the honor and glory for which you so richly deserve. Let us go now in peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Amen.
God bless everyone. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you next week. <laughs> All right. See you next okay. week. Okay. Yes. Bye. Bye bye.